Welcome to probably one of the most unique benchmark videos that you've ever seen. And that's because we've built our own custom benchmarking tool that runs a series of tests that we give it all by itself without us even needing to touch the keyboard or the mouse. What this means is that we can perfectly compare two devices side by side. And with a timer, you'll see exactly which one of the two is faster at the end of 13 different tests. From Geekbench and Cinebench to some real world usage in Lightroom, Photoshop, Logic, Xcode, Blender, and more. In this video, we tested the base Mac Studio with a 24-core GPU M1 Max that sells for $2,000 against the M1 Max 16-inch MacBook Pro that features a 32-core GPU that sells for $3,500 to see if by any chance you'll actually get better performance from the weaker Mac Studio as this is a desktop with a much better cooling system. Our tool has now started the benchmarks, so you can see the live timer on the iPad as well as some metrics that I'll go over in more detail right after we're done. The first test is Geekbench 5, which the MacBook Pro finishes only half a second later. They're both moving to our Cinebench test, where it seems like the MacBook Pro is slightly ahead and finishes first. They're both opening GFX Bench now to run the 1440p Aztec Ruins off-screen test, and as you can see, the MacBook Pro is in the lead, as it's already at the Compute test, which it just finished, while the Mac Studio is still going. The MacBook Pro is now starting test number 5, the AJA the Speed test, while the Mac Studio is still on the Geekbench compute. They're both in the Lightroom test now, and I'm gonna go over in more detail as to what each test is and what it does, but for now, the MacBook Pro finished this significantly faster, with the Mac Studio still going. The MacBook Pro is now done with a Photoshop test and is now starting the Final Cut 4K test, whereas the Mac Studio is still two tests behind. I was honestly not expecting this much of a difference between the two, especially not in the MacBook Pro's favor. We're now on to the Final Cut 8K project, and it seems like this is when the Mac Studio has started catching up a bit. Now, the MacBook Pro is still ahead, but at least they are both on the same test now. Or maybe not for long, because the MacBook Pro has already moved on to Logic Pro 10. And now it's doing the Xcode test, while the Mac Studio is still rendering that 8K project. Now the MacBook Pro is doing the Blender render, and the Mac Studio seems to have caught up once again. Our MacBook Pro is doing the last two tests, which are reruns of Geekbench and GFX Bench, and there you go, the MacBook Pro finished in 2 hours and 6 minutes, while the base Mac Studio took a couple of minutes longer, finishing in 2 hours and 15 minutes. And to be honest, this is actually really good, just 9 minutes slower. Back when I was doing all of our YouTube videos entirely by myself, I had to juggle between Final Cut, Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Edition, so I was using a lot of different software tools every single day for every video, basically. Now, which is why our speed test can show you a more real-world difference than just running a single Geekbench or a single video export, as you don't really get the full picture there unless you run multiple tests uh, one after another uh, like you would in an actual day of work. Now, taking a look at our leaderboard, the 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro is currently in the first place, followed by the Mac Studio in the second, uh, the 14-inch Baseline M1 Pro in the third, and then the M1 13-inch MacBook Pro in the fourth. But wait, we aren't done just yet. In the background, we also measured thermals, clock speeds, fan speeds, RAM usage, and even the wattage for each of these tests. And now we're going to sync up the footage uh, so that we can put the devices side by side, just to see how they each performed uh, at each of these tests. And what really gave the 16-inch MacBook Pro that nine minute lead. In terms of our first test, which was Geekbench 5, uh, the main thing that I noticed was how much cooler the Mac Studio was. You can see this on both the thermal camera and our temperature readings. Now, the Mac Studio was about 20 to 30 degrees cooler on the CPU as well as the GPU. And the overall chassis temperature difference was quite significant too. In terms of the results, the MacBook Pro scored higher in both multi-core and single core, which was very unexpected as they both have the exact same 10-core CPU. So if anything, the Mac Studio should have been faster here thanks to the better cooling system. So what about Cinebench, which unlike Geekbench, uh, it does fully max out the CPU usage to render the scene for exactly 10 minutes. The temperatures were insanely high on the 16-inch, reaching even 96 degrees, while the Mac Studio never went above 60, with its fans still being on the lowest setting. So you can definitely see how much better the Mac Studio's cooling system really is here. But when we got the results, the MacBook Pro was once again faster, not by that much, but still faster. So I had a look at a power draw and noticed that the Mac Studio was only drawing about 25 watts of power for the CPU, while the MacBook Pro was drawing about 27. 
For some reason, Apple just isn't letting it run at its full peak performance. Then we ran GFX Bench off-screen to test the raw GPU performance without the results being impacted by the resolution of the displays. And just like in Cinebench, the GPU temperatures on the 16-inch reached 90 degrees, compared to just 53 on the Mac Studio. Sadly, in terms of the power draw, we had the exact same issue here, with the Mac Studio's GPU only drawing 31.6 watts of power compared to 43 on the MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro got 302 frames per second, while the Mac Studio got 238. That is 26% more on the MacBook, while having 33% more GPU cores. Then we ran Geekbench Compute, another GPU benchmark, just less intensive, and here I noticed the exact same power draw issues as before, so it does seem to be consistent no matter what app you use. The 32-core M1 Max inside the MacBook Pro was 12% faster here compared to the 24-core M1 Max inside the base Mac Studio. And now we wanted to see if there was any difference in terms of the disk speed. Um, using AJ Disk Speed Test, we wrote and then read a 16GB 4K file. And it seems like the MacBook Pro had a noticeably faster write speed here, while the Mac Studio had a marginally faster read speed. I should also mention that our Mac Studio is the base 512GB model, while our MacBook Pro has 1TB. Larger drives are usually faster, so it would be really interesting to see how the 1TB M1 Ultra of the Mac Studio uh, would actually compare against the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Definitely subscribe to see that video as soon as it comes out. Now let's move on to some real-world usage, starting off with Lightroom, where we first imported 288 images of various resolutions up to 100 megapixels. The import speed was about the same on both, at 7 seconds. We then applied the same presets with the same adjustments on all the other 227 images, and this took 51 seconds on both. We then converted all of these into compressed JPEGs, and this took 4 minutes and 45 seconds on the MacBook Pro versus 11 minutes and 46 seconds on the Mac Studio. Now, this surely cannot be right, right? As Lightroom just uses the CPU and they both have the same 10 core M1 Max CPU. In fact, the Mac Studio should have been faster here as it has a much better cooling system, uh, which we could once again see by looking at the temperatures. The culprit was once again the power draw, with a 16 inch drawing as much as 32 watts, while the Mac Studio was only drawing about 30 at the highest although in most cases it was staying at 15 or even as low as 8. Something wasn't right here, so we decided to run the test a second time. And this time the results were much closer, 5 minutes on a 16 inch uh, compared to 5 minutes and 43 seconds on the Mac Studio. But even this time the Mac Studio should have still been faster which was sadly not the case. Moving on to our Photoshop test, we loaded in a 50 megapixel photo and applied three different filters with adjustments to each. This doesn't seem like a difficult thing to do for these machines, but trust me, when you're working with such a large file, it is. So this entire test from the moment we opened up Photoshop took two minutes and seven seconds on the MacBook Pro, while the Mac Studio took two minutes and 10 seconds. So basically the same here. Then we tested Final Cut, starting off with our own 15-minute 4K project, which was actually our Pixel 6 Pro vs S21 Ultra camera comparison video. This was a very difficult project as it was full of titles, motion graphics and effects, as well as loads of side-by-side -side images and videos. We first wanted to see how the playback was, so we hard-coded our benchmark tool to play back these projects in quality mode, and they were both perfectly smooth with no frame drops. We then exported this to H.264, and the MacBook Pro was faster, taking 9 minutes and 30 seconds versus 10 minutes and 26 seconds on the Mac Studio. And this was because even though they both have the same uh, media encode and decode engines, this project was full of effects, meaning that the GPU also had to be utilized. And because the MacBook Pro has 8 more GPU cores, it managed to finish the export faster, although this time, the GPU frequency and the GPU power draw uh, were much more similar between these two machines. We then moved on to our 6K Final Cut test, which was shorter at 6 minutes, but full of H.265 footage, which is more demanding. This project didn't really have any effects aside from just some basic titles, so the GPU would not need to be pushed as hard as the video encoders would be carrying most of the load. Playback was still perfectly smooth on both without any frame drops, and exporting this project took 18 minutes and 9 seconds on the MacBook Pro compared to 18 minutes and 4 seconds on the Mac Studio. 
the Mac Studio was finally faster here. You can also see how, just like I mentioned, the GPU was barely even used as its frequency was down to a minimum. And here we have our most demanding project yet, an 8K 60 frames per second project with 8K red raw footage side by side with motion track titles as well. Playback was not real time anymore, but it was still very impressive. And keep in mind that this was also in quality mode on both. So I'm just blown away by how smooth these were. We exported into H.264 and it took 45 minutes and 30 seconds on the MacBook Pro and 46 minutes and 39 seconds on the Mac Studio. Because of how this project was, both the CPU and the GPU were heavily used, uh, with the par draw, frequencies, and even the RAM usage being extremely similar. The only major difference being the temperatures, which were consistently 20 to 30 degrees lower on the Mac Studio, while also keeping its fans to their minimum. The MacBook Pro's fans were quite ramped up at that point. We then moved to Logic Pro 10, where we opened up a Billy Eilish sample project and exported each track into individual AIFF 16-bit files. And this took exactly the same on both 1 minutes and 7 seconds, with pretty much an identical part draw between the two this time. We also tested Xcode, where we made our very own stress test project. The Mac Studio was faster by 30 seconds, while also, for the very first time, drawing more power than the MacBook Pro, uh, and also keeping a slightly higher clock speed. And then we also tested Blender's classroom scene using the Cycle CPU render, uh, which, just like our Xcode test, is very CPU heavy. And what was really interesting to see here is that uh, the clock speeds and the par draw remained almost identical on both, despite the MacBook Pro being in the high 80s in terms of the CPU temperatures compared to the high 50s on the Mac Studio. The Mac Studio was actually faster here by 13 seconds. Now, before we ended our testing, we had our tool run uh, Geekbench and GFXbench one more time to see if after all of these tests that we had been running for almost two hours now, uh, we would see any throttling. And in fact, the Geekbench scores were actually higher on both the MacBook Pro and the Mac Studio. In GFX Bench, the MacBook Pro stayed pretty much the same, while the Mac Studio only dropped one FPS. So it is safe to say that these machines do not throttle, even under extreme load for hours and hours. So in conclusion, if we disregard our first Lightroom run on the Mac Studio and we include our second, um, then there's only a three minute difference between these two machines, which in my opinion is just negligible. And I'm sure that once Apple actually fixes these weird part draw issues, we should actually see even better performance from the base Mac Studio when compared to the 32 core M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro. So if you're on a budget and you already have uh, a screen, uh, a keyboard and a mouse, then getting the base Mac Studio is a no brainer. If you've enjoyed our speed test, then definitely do subscribe as we do have more of them in the works right now. I'm Daniel, this has been Zen of Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zen of Tech, signing out. Cheers.